we previously made a login application. So let's quickly run through that application because in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a way to register new users for that. So before we get into the details of that, let's just quickly go through and review exactly what we did for creating a login system. So the first thing we did was we created a form and we just had it called login in the H2. We had two inputs, the first one with an ID of username, the second one with an ID of password. We had a button with a type of button so the page doesn't refresh. And our on-click event, we just called login. So we'll come back to main.js. And we have the function login. Actually, in the last video, we called it get info, but really that's not descriptive enough. So I've changed it to login here. You can keep get info if you want to. It's really not essential, but it's really good to in the future, name your function, something that's really descriptive. So we had our array of users called object people. We had username and password. So we had three objects in there that we could test out. And the way we built it was we had a function that ran on click that would first store the username and password based on the inputs using dot value. And then we would run through the loop to see if the username and password matched up to any of the ones in the object or the array of objects. And if it did, we told them it was logged in. Then we hit return, so we canceled the function. Otherwise, we would give them an error that it was an incorrect username or password. Now let's quickly test this out. So we'll just use the first one, Sam password 25. Keep the console open. And just in case, we'll do Matt password 88. All right, that's working. And Chris password 3. And that's working. Okay, beautiful. So we'll just clear this. So our instructions for this project are to create a function that registers a new user on your previous login application. Make sure it's on the same page and doesn't refresh when clicked. That way we can test out if they can log in too. Since we're not storing the data yet, we actually can't have it refresh the entire page. We'll get the local storage later on in the course. Then we're going to test to ensure that the username is not already taken and that the password is at least eight characters. Before watching how we built this, go ahead and see if you can figure out as much as you can on your own. See how far you can get. It's definitely going to take you some time, but just see how far you can get trying to do it on your own. Take at least 30 minutes and just see what you can code out. So pause the video here and come back to it after taking some time and working on it. First, we're going to create the function. So we're going to create a function and we'll just call it register user. Then we're going to come back into our HTML page, copy this entire form, do register user form, register, and we'll do new user, new password, and register. Make sure all that matches up. Whoop, register user. Be really careful if you leave out the parentheses or you misspell something, everything will go wrong. So be really careful with that. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to be able to copy and paste this and just change the info around a bit. You know, we actually really should indent this out too. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So we'll come back down here, move that down. All right, so now we're retrieving information, but we need this to match up with our current ID. So new user, paste it in. Whoop. Paste that in there. New password, paste that in there. And we shouldn't keep username and password. They are local variables, but that's not really the description that we want. So we're just gonna call it register user and register password all right so 
Now the issue that we run into, and whenever students try to do this, is when they use dot push, which is exactly what we're going to be using. So we'll do object people dot push. The problem is you can't just put in register user comma register password because of the way that it's laid out. We need to push a whole new object. So the way that we solve this is we create a new variable. We'll call it new user. We'll have it equal our register user. Make sure that you give it the key that matches up. So username and then password. So username and password, I'm retrieving from the objects. So these will match up. So when I put it in, it will match up exactly. So we have username and password. So it'll be whatever the person entered here for their username and whatever they entered here for their password. All right, so let's go ahead and test out pushing this new user. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do console.log object people. All right, and then I'm going to save it. So let's go ahead and test this out. Refresh the page, and I'm just going to do test and test, and I'll do login, which, by the way, we need to change this from login to register. But look at that. So we had three objects before, and now we have four with a password and username of test and test. So if I come back here and I do test and test, now it says test is logged in. So it's working. It's registering a new user. The issue is if I do mat and testing and log in, now I have somebody with two user names. The, na the usernames match up exactly. It'll still work, but we really don't want two users with the same exact username. Clear this out come back in here. So what we need to do is we need to use some logic to ensure that the username that the new user puts in there does not match up to one that is currently in our system or is currently one of our objects. And we also want to make sure that the password isn't too short. Typically websites go with eight characters or more so we're just going to match that as well. We need to create a for loop. The i equals zero. i is less than object people dot length and then I plus plus then we'll do if register user equals object people I dot username so that way it's going to loop through every single user and see if it matches up and we'll do alert that username is already in use please choose another and after this we're going to do return because we want to stop the function right there we want to make sure that they get the alert right away and they're just told right away to do it because we don't want them to go ahead and, and keep checking then we'll do else if plus the return will actually prevent the object from being pushed as well so it has to go through this entire for loop before the object, the new object gets pushed. So by having return there, we ensure that it does not get pushed. So then we'll do else if register password dot length is less than eight alert that password is too short. Include eight or more characters. And if we want to get really fancy, you know, we can do special characters and we can use regular expressions to find those kind of things out. We're, going to, we're not going to do that right now. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to include another return. Because if we get this alert, we also do not want them to be registered as a new user. All right. So this is looking good to me. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll come here. We'll refresh the page. I'm just going to do object people real quick. Object people. And we see that there are three in there. So when we refreshed, test and 
test did not get included in there. So we're going to register a new user. But first, I want to test out our if statements to make sure that we can't register people with the same exact name. Let's write random characters. All right, that username is already taken. Let's try Chris. All right, that username is already taken. Let's try Pete. And we're going to do just four. That password is too short. Include eight, eight or more characters. So let's go ahead and try password. We'll log in. And now Pete is added as the fourth user. So we can log in with Pete. Log in. There we go. Pete is logged in. So now we can register new users.